In the last video on this topic, I walked you through the relationship between watts, volts, and amps, and we talked about how that might start to apply to voltage converters or battery chargers, which are basically just fancy voltage converters. In this video, I want to talk about the different specifications of battery chargers and, and how that will apply to our evaluation of a specific battery charger. And then in the next video, we'll actually look at some specific battery chargers and talk about, you know, which ones you might pick if, if or I might pick if I was going to buy one, which I am. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. The first specification that you'll look at for a battery charger is its input voltage range. Now, these typically uh, have a low input voltage of about 10 or 11 volts. The idea being that you can run them off of a 12 volt car battery or something like that or common. 12 volt power supply, which are which are again uh, just very prolific and cheap, especially as LED lighting has gotten more popular. Uh, there are a lot of cheap 12 volt supplies designed to run outdoor or indoor LED lighting. Uh, you can get them off of Amazon. Uh, they're, they're they're pretty good value for money. Um, so they typically have a low end, a little less than 12 volts, uh, and a high end. Well, it's common to see a high end voltage of 18 volts which is actually a little annoying because if you're like me, I have a bunch of uh, spare 19 and 19 and a half volt, 18 and a half volt, something like that, uh, power supplies from computers uh, that the computer is long since dead and gone, laptops long since dead and gone, and it's a decent 150 watt supply that I can't do anything with. It's just sitting there doing nothing. And if this thing only went up to like 19 or 20 volts, I could use them, but I can't because it only goes up to 18. So that's a little annoying. In fact, I even cracked one of them open once. Oh, violated the warranty, health and safety. I cracked one of them open once to see if there was like a little trim pot in there somewhere that I could turn down, yeah, but there wasn't. So <clears throat> uh, you'll see that uh, the ex one exception here is that this one has a low input voltage of 5 volts. Uh, we'll talk about why that's essentially useless, but oh, good for you. <laughs> and then some of them go much higher, uh, up to 28 or even 36 volts. And the reason, if you watched my previous video and you really fully internalized it, you'll start to understand that the reason for that is that the higher the input voltage, the lower the input amperage. And since amps make heats, amps make heat, the input amperage is going to be one of the factors that limits how much power the charger can put out. Okay, so here we've got the maximum input amperage for each of these chargers. Okay, and that's going to apply regardless of the input voltage. So if you have 12 volts going into this charger with a max of 5 input amps, the most it can put out is 5 times 12, 60 watts. Now, it's actually rated for up to 80 watts, but that doesn't matter because it, with, with these with these specifications, whichever limit you hit first is the one that restricts you. It's the least of the of the limits that that stops you. OK, <clears throat> if you uh, if you had a dog and you put it on three different chains, it started to run. Right. The first chain to catch it up short. The fact that the other two are longer doesn't matter. So we can see then that. The higher the input voltage, the lower the input amperage, and the more practical wattage we will be able to put out into our battery. In other words, the faster we'll be able to charge the batteries. Uh, some of these have an AC input. Only one of them does, really. The others require an external batter, uh, DC supply. That's relevant because you're going to have, you know, you look at the price over here, and again, we'll go through these in the next video and we'll look at the actual specific chargers. For any of these chargers, though, you're going to also need a, a, a DC supply. And that DC supply could be as cheap as $25. It could be as much as $60 or $100 or sometimes even $150 or more for the really, really big ones. Uh, so the advantage and disadvantage there, I mean, on the one hand, uh, if you if you have a built-in AC input, it's nice because it's an all-in-one unit. You can just plug it into the wall. But on the flip side, uh, you definitely still pay for it. These two units here are identical. And when you're paying an extra, you know, whatever, 60 bucks thereabouts for the built-in uh, power supply. Now the flip side is if the unit doesn't have an AC input, 
then you could either use your power supply at home or you could take it to the field and run it off your car battery if you so desire. Okay. The charge rate. Each of these units will have a max charge rate that they will not go over. Uh, and that's just software configured and the unit just won't go over that. And again, that relates to heat, right? That relates to the amount of heat that the unit is being forced to dissipate when it's pushing current into the battery. So here is our input current. Here's our output current. We have limits on both of these, okay? Whichever one of these we hit first, that's going to be the restriction on the overall power that we can we can push into the battery. All right. And then we have two different watt measurements. And I gave you two different measurements because most of these will specify their wattage at their max input voltage. So this charger, whichever one it might be, I have no idea. We'll get to that in the next video. This charger <laughs> will do 80 watts, but it'll only do 80 watts if you're giving it 18 volts because of this 5 amp input limit. If you're at 12 volts, you'll only get 54 watts. Oh, see, marketers, sneaky, sneaky marketers, right? This one is rated for 250 watts if you give it 18 volts. If you give it 12 volts, which is what most of us are probably going to do, it'll give you 162 watts, okay? So that's why I've got these two columns in the spreadsheet. One of them is for the rated watts at the max input voltage, and one is for the rated watts at a more typical 12 volts. I have a 12 volt, uh, up to 12 volt, 350 watt power supply that I got for 25 bucks off of Amazon, and it's got an adjustable uh, potent, it's trim pot, and if you turn it all the way up, it'll go to like 14.8 volts, and that's what I've done. Because I want to give my charger the maximum input voltage that it can, so I can have the minimum input current, and that will maximize the output wattage. And if you didn't understand that last sentence, go back, think about it, break it down, make it make sense. Because if you really can't fully understand a battery charger's capabilities until you understand that sentence. So pause the video, go back if you need to, think about it. That's the, that's the, the nugget, the gem in the middle of this whole thing. And I'm going to move on and come back to me when you got it, okay? <laughs> All right. One of the things I want to point out to you is that on some of these chargers, like this one here with a 36-volt max voltage, oh, a 1,000 watts. Oh, my gosh, isn't that amazing? Yeah, if you have a 36-volt input, where are you getting that from? Do you have three 12-volt batteries hooked up in serial? No, I don't either. Do you have a 36-volt bench power supply capable of a 1,000 watts? No, I don't either. So this charger with this 1,000 watt rating, that's a little bit, for most of us, that's not realistic. It's nice marketing numbers, and it's not, strictly speaking, dishonest. But with a more typical 12 volt supply, you're only going to get 540 watts. Hey, that's still more than any other charger here, right? So it's still it's still a lot, but it's not a 1,000. 28 volts, etc. Okay? So that's what those two columns are. Next, we've got the discharge rate. Now, you're going to use the charger to charge your batteries, but you may also use it to put the batteries into storage mode. If you charge up a bunch of batteries and then you end up not flying them all or you don't go to the field that day, it's not good to leave your batteries fully charged for too long. It hurts their overall capacity and it raises their internal resistance. If you do it for a day or two, it doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. But if you do it for weeks at a time, it will. it's cumulative. So this is the discharge rate that it's capable of of having okay discharge higher discharge rate means that you can get the batteries discharged faster and discharging some of the batteries that we use at you know two amps it's going to take a long time okay bear in mind also though that the discharge power rating comes into play uh it can discharge at seven amps but only 20 watts let's say i'm discharging a, a 4s battery and it's at 16 volts 20 divided by 16 is one point something. And so when you go to discharge this battery, the 20 watt limit is gonna come into play and you're only gonna be able to discharge at like one, one amp and change. The fact that the discharge rate is capped at seven amps is completely misleading unless you're discharging, you know, like a 1S or a 2S battery, right? Okay, so bear in mind again, much like the charge ratings, uh, the discharge power and the discharge rate Whichever one of these you hit first is the one that's going to apply, okay? And usually that's going to be the discharge power. So this charger here is rated at 2 amps, 
but I'm currently using this very charger to discharge four 4S batteries, and it's discharging at like 0.6 amps. Why is it not hitting 2 amps? Because the watt limit is, is being hit first. By the way, I know that this is blank. There are some blank entries in this table, and that's because I couldn't track down some of these specs for some of these chargers, so I just left them blank. Uh, if I can just back up for one minute, notice that these columns are blue. I made these columns blue because I wanted, uh, these are the main things that will limit the output power and the, and the charge rate that you'll get out of the charger. And frankly, one of the main things we think about when we pick a charger is how fast can it charge my batteries, right? Okay, so it's whichever one of these blue columns you hit first, that's going to limit your charge rate. So I, I made them stand out. Some of these chargers have a function called regenerative discharge. Now, what regenerative discharge means is that, let's say you're running off a 12-volt car battery, and you want to discharge your batteries. Okay, fine. Some people use a 12-volt car battery uh, even at home, even when they're not in the field, just because it's a convenient, you, you know, you spend all night charging it up on a trickle charger, and then you, it can just pump amps into your batteries, you know. Regenerative discharge means that when the when the charger discharges the battery to put it in storage mode or even to discharge it fully, instead of just running the current through a resistor inside the charger, it'll actually backfeed the battery and charge up the battery. Okay, and so th that actually can be much faster because the the power is being used to charge. Well, for one thing, it means that you're putting power back into your car battery, and that's nice instead of just turning it into heat. So this is the rate at which you can do regenerative discharge. 20 amps, 20 amps, 30 amps, 20 amps. Bear in mind, and these ones that say NA, they don't support regenerative discharge. So when we get to the individual models, that's what that means. Uh, bear in mind that this 20 amp discharge rate, well, that assumes that your car battery or whatever it is you're dumping power into can be charged at that rate. And it's probably the case that your car battery can't take a 20 amp charge rate. Maybe it can. You should look that up. But this is what the charger will limit you to. Your battery also has to be able to take it. Also, should should sort of go without saying, but just in case, if you're using a, a bench supply, like uh, like just a you know 350-watt, 12-volt power supply, obviously you can't do regenerative discharge into that. You have to have something like a battery that can take current. The balance rate is an interesting uh, specification. The way that balance charging works is that the charger continues dumping the full charge current into the discharge lead. And then any cell that has reached the maximum voltage, it pulls current out of just that cell. So it discharges just that cell to keep the that cell at whatever, 4.2 volts. So we th I used to think that balance charging meant that it only charged the cells that weren't full yet. But actually, it, does, it never charges through the balance connector. It only discharges through the balance connector. And the idea is you put power into the whole battery, you put current into the whole battery, or charge is the right word, you put charge into the whole battery through the discharge lead, and then you draw the, the proportional amount of charge out through the balance lead. And that keeps the cell from overcharging and allows the other cells to come up. Well, the limiting factor here is that it can only pull charge from the cell so fast. And so this parameter will affect how quickly the charger can finish the balance part of the charging. So from the time when the first cell hits 4.2 volts to the time when the rest of the cells are all perfectly balanced, a higher number here will mean that the charger can perform that faster. Okay. The difference between them is, is relatively small. 200. This one can go 500 million, but most of them are 350 milliamp hours. So uh, there's not a huge difference here, but I mention it. Maximum cell count. Most of these are 6S chargers. This one goes up to 10S, but I've still included it. Uh, I'll talk about why. There are a whole, a whole bunch of 8S chargers out there and 10S chargers. I mostly tried to focus on 6S chargers because I feel like that's the kind of chargers most of us are looking for. And if you watch this video and, and pay attention to the specs and, and sort of learn the fundamentals, then you can certainly take this information and apply it to any charger that you care to. Number of channels. Most of these chargers are single channel. Some of them are two channels, which basically means that you have two chargers in one case. And one of them is a four channel, which has four chargers in one case. 
So you'll see these, like this is a 4 times 300 watt charger. It's listed as a 1200 watt charger, but I've got it in the spreadsheet as a 4 times 300 with the idea that you can, you could certainly figure out, uh, you know, what, uh, you know, what X times 4 is. Does it support high voltage LiPos? If you have these new, like the Turnigy bolt line, the high voltage LiPos that charge to 4.35 volts per cell, only a few chargers today support that. Some of the chargers, you can trick the charger by miscalibrating it on purpose, so that it, but then God help you if you accidentally charge a regular LiPo on there, you're going to end up at 4.35 and potentially have some fire. Can it connect via the PC? Some of these can connect with a USB port or a, a dongle adapter, a little plug-in adapter via servo lead to your PC. And you can actually be controlled via the PC or download logs if that's the kind of thing you're into. Does it support external discharge? External discharge means that instead of, when you discharge the battery, instead of dumping the power into uh, an internal heat sink or with regenerative discharge and dumping it into a battery, you hook up an external load like an automotive light bulb or a 12-volt halogen light or something like that, or even just a big, a big resistor or heat sink, right? And it will, the, the charger will dump the charge into that external load and will monitor the battery and stop it. So this is just like if you have a discharge, I have a, a couple of automotive batteries that I plug into my, into my batteries if I want to discharge them faster than my current charger can do it. It's only discharging at 0.6 amps, but these batteries will discharge at 3 or 4 amps and get it down them much faster. But the problem is if I leave it plugged in, then the battery is fully discharged and I've destroyed a battery. Oops. So this, fun this function will allow the charger to monitor the discharge into the external load and then when it's the battery reaches the determined voltage, we'll shut it down. So that's very, very cool. Very cool. Some of these chargers have a foam cut driver. If you have a wire foam cutter uh, for, for hot, hot, hot wire cutting foam, they can uh, be a, vol a current source for that. Some of them can do a brushed, can drive a brushed motor for breaking in brushed motors. Eh, that's kind of nice. Some of them have the ability to measure the battery's internal resistance. That's kind of cool. They have the ability to cycle the batteries for break-in. I personally feel like this is not necessary for LiPos, but, but some people like to do it. And then some of these have a function called pre-charge, which I think is really cool. Uh, pre-charge is if you have a LiPo that has been fully discharged, it's too low to uh, do a regular LiPo charge on. You can trickle charge it back to about 3.0 or 3.2 volts per cell, and then you can do a very low C-rate LiPo charge on it. Now, most people do that by hooking it up to a, a NICAD charger, but that's not entirely safe because if you leave it plugged in too long, the NICAD charger will just keep trying to charge it up and burn, and you'll you'll get a fire. So you have to be really, really careful about monitoring that. With this pre-charge function, the charger will trickle charge the battery until it reaches whatever 3.0 or 3.2 volts per cell, and then stop. So that's a very nice function if you ever try to recover a battery that's been too far discharged. And those are the specifications that we're going to talk about. Oh, no, I gave you the, Oh, I showed you the, the list. <laughs> we're going to go in and we're going to talk about these chargers. These are some that I've picked out as, as examples. And we'll break it down and see, you know, what factors I might take into consideration when I'm deciding. And I am thinking about which of these I'm going to buy. Uh, because as I said in the previous video, my current charger, which is an AccuCell 650 watt, takes way too long to charge. So... I'll see you next time, and we'll do a rundown of the actual products. Bye-bye.